Welcome, welcome everyone. And I'm happy to uh, let you guys know that I have a series coming out and this is the overview of it, okay? It's starting next week. So we're gonna be talking about midlife crisis energy. And I know a lot of my viewers are interested in that. Either you're coming into that time of life, you know, ages 41 through 43, or you're in it right now, or you've been through it. No matter where you're at in this, I think it can help. Even if somebody you know is going through this, it helps you to relate to that person. But definitely if you're coming into it, and some of these energies could happen as early as 36 years old, by the way, if you're coming into this energy, it helps you prepare. It helps you to really process this in a mindful, constructive way as you're going through it and to know that you know, certain things are for a higher purpose, a reason they're gonna pass. At least that's what I told myself when I was going through it. I'm 46 now, so I, you know, I've been through this energy like 2016 through 2019. Uh, I was going through a lot of this energy. So throughout the course of this series, I'm gonna be doing a lot of personal sharing with you to uh, make it more relatable because I don't wanna just give you a textbook answer right which is readily available and we will have a little bit of that there's a purpose to that right but also want it to be uh, relatable uh, so that you can really understand what does this look like in real life okay now for those of you who are uh, not so interested in the spiritual content the astrology and you're like eh you know well after I finish the series next week, um, we'll get back to, you know, talking about healing and relationships and self-help, stuff like that. But I do feel like even though we are looking at this through an astrological lens, I do feel like there's a lot of wisdom that can be gleaned from it, even though, even if you're a viewer who's not really into astrology. And for those of you who are, I'm gonna you know, give you a heads up and say, look, we're gonna cover four main astrological transits plus a bonus transit that most astrologers don't cover on this subject, but I feel is definitely relevant. Um, and those transits are uh, starting with Pluto squaring Pluto, then Neptune squaring your natal Neptune and Uranus opposing your natal Uranus and um, your second Saturn uh, opposition. And then finally, the bonus is going to be on Jupiter opposing your natal Jupiter. All of these happen roughly at around, around age 42, somewhere thereabouts. And so um, it will be good to have your, uh, your natal chart on hand. I will have a link down below so that if you, uh, you don't, know you know where these placements are in your natal chart say like Pluto Neptune Uranus Saturn uh, Jupiter then you know you'll you'll be able to kind of uh, get that ready for next week and as we're going through uh, one transit per video per day then uh, you can kind of reflect back and see maybe how this is going to look for you or how this experience might have impacted you if you've already been through it. Now, let me give you just a quick overview of what these transits are about. It's commonly associated with that time in life that we stereotypically, uh, you know, we, we look at as that time in life, you know, when a man runs off and he gets a two-door race car and he divorces the wife and goes after pursuing you know some young woman okay that maybe is out of his league or other people would think is out of his league okay um yeah it doesn't look like that for everybody it didn't look like that for me but um fortunately but you get the picture and so it will be a little bit different, but there are some commonalities in that um, this is an age and stage of life where you are questioning yourself and you're questioning life. And during this time of questioning yourself, uh, you might come to realize, you know, I thought I knew myself and I really don't, you know, or w what I thought I knew about myself all this time is just wrong, you know? 
or you could reclaim something about yourself that you abandoned in your youth you know like why did i get away from that you know i used to love doing that why did i let those people talk me out of doing what i love i'm gonna go back and do that again you know or um maybe you're going to pursue something from your past that you feel you failed to achieve and you know this could be for better or worse the highest purpose of this is that you discover through this time uh, what really gives your life meaning and then you focus on that the downside for people who don't master these energies very well um, if at all <laughs> is that they might try to recapture um, something from their youth in vain right like you know going after the girl that you can get in high school right or the guy you can get in high school you know you think about that the the um the nerd <laughs> the stereotypical nerd from high school who always wanted the cheerleader and you know couldn't get her but now he's at an age stage in life where he's got status um, he's got a nice car a nice home a nice job a nice bank account and so he goes after the girl that he couldn't get in high school that he always wanted or that type of girl um, and that might be a vanity thing like proving to other people look at what I have when in reality um, that's not really what you want or need because you got to dig a little deeper for that higher purpose there and discover what really gives your life meaning is it having that hot chick from high school nah but one way or another, the energy is purpose to help you figure that out. So, um, and, and to help you reorient yourself to who you truly are at a core level and then give your life real meaning. But in order to do this, see, it sounds all nice the way I'm laying it out, <laughs> but I've lived through it, right? So I will tell you that in order to achieve these pie in the sky ideals, well, you might have to give up some things that are painful. <laughs> Um, and perhaps it's painful to give up because you come to this stark realization that, you know, um, holding on to that thing was not really appropriate for me or it wasn't authentic to me. Uh, and I've got to let go of this. I've, I've got to give something up. Um, maybe something that you hoped or wished for, but in fact turns out to be nothing but mere illusion or something that is impossible to achieve or it's just incompatible it's not gonna work and so you get these kind of sober wake-up calls about what fits and what doesn't like it or not you know right like trying to go back and rekindle a relationship with the one who got away right we see that a lot in our 40s people trying to hey i was kind of a little bit guilty of that um but yeah, trying to, trying to rekindle the relationship with the one who got away. We think, well, what would have happened in my life if I would have married that person instead of that person? Um, but then you go back and you, you try to, you know, I don't know, rekindle this relationship. And then you, feel, you figure out, well, um, this is never going to work out with this person heartbreaking as it is it's never going to work out so there can be a time you know during these these years 41 through 43 for some as early as 36 where you're dealing with shattered illusions and the process can really be intense and um and part of the intensity has to do with you walking away from maybe something that you did more in your late teens your 20s even your 30s god forbid where you were trying to meet external demands that were placed upon you maybe from you know others family friends society um, and you got to transition into meeting more of the internal needs right so you're, you're getting away from what maybe your 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 parents or society told you was success right like that you're gonna go get into student loan debt <laughs> that's success um, you're gonna go work that nine to five job that is just soul crushing you are going to um, marry who they like not who you're in love with oh fill in the blank right we figured this out uh, more in our 40s right um, the pitfalls of what decisions we made in our 20s so and maybe it was coming from a place of insecurity not knowing ourselves um, wanting that social approval but 
all these energies that come up in you know the midlife crisis years are geared towards us living more um, for ourselves and what's authentic and appropriate to our true selves instead of others. Reminds me of um, that song by the Talking Heads, Once in a Lifetime, and that song just kept popping up as I was preparing for this video and the series. And even as I was going through the midlife crisis energy myself through, you know, uh, from 2016 to 2019 that song just kept coming in my head and it's kind of telling of you know that time in life and it, the lyrics are kind of funny if you recall some of you uh, Gen Xers out there <laughs> maybe the baby boomers too recall that early 80s song from the talking heads once in a lifetime where he says um, you may find yourself living in a shotgun shack living in another part of the world you may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife and you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? How do I work this? And you may tell yourself, this is not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful wife. And you may ask yourself, am I right or am I wrong? And you may ask yourself, my God, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> and I absolutely went through that, okay? Um, I had moments during the midlife crisis energy where I'm like, my God, this is not my life. This is not what I had planned. What in the hell happened here? Um, and you're definitely looking within yourself to try to figure this out. Um, so. I want to share some of my experiences uh, each day as we go through these transits because I do want to speak from the perspective of somebody who's lived through it, not just a, you know, a textbook understanding. And my hope is that you'll come out of this energy, maybe with some insight and wisdom to live through it a little bit better than I did. <laughs> but as you can see, I made it out alive. So there is hope, right? And I hope you will join me for the following parts. It is going to be a six part series, right? This is part one, the overview. And um, I will be releasing parts two through six next week. So if you wanna make sure you are notified whenever it is released, make sure you're subscribed and that you've activated the bell notifications for all notifications. And um, that is all I have for now. Thanks for tuning in.